Congressman Pallone, thank you for speaking with Blue Jersey. Uh, most Blue Jersey readers will tend to vote for either you or Rush Holt. How would you differentiate yourself from Congressman Holt? Well, the main thing is that I've accomplished a lot uh, in Congress. In other words, uh, if you look at just voting records, you might say, oh, you know, the voting records aren't that different. But I've worked very hard to uh, pass legislation and move agencies to actually make a difference uh, in people's lives. And, you know, just as an example, uh, when I was first elected to Congress, we had all the ocean dumping sites off the coast of New Jersey, and I worked to close them all uh, in my first few years in Congress. And as a result, you know, the ocean water quality improved, and we didn't have the beach closings that we had uh, in the late 80s. Uh, then I started to work on uh, cleaning up Superfund sites and getting more money for uh, the Superfund program and eventually passing a brownfields bill uh, that also sent money back to the states to clean up sites that weren't as dirty, if you will, as the Superfund sites, but still needed to be cleaned up. And I worked a lot with Senator Lautenberg on a lot of those environmental issues where he would introduce the bill in the Senate and I would introduce it in the House and then we'd, you know, work to get it passed. And probably the, the, the best accomplishment is with regard to health care. In other words, when I, uh, when I first uh, got involved in the health care issue, I remember going to a lunch counter in my hometown of Long Branch and I talked to a waitress who said that, you know, she didn't mind that she didn't get health insurance on the job, but she wanted health insurance for her children. And so I went back to Washington, and from that came the, the idea of expanding the Children's Health Initiative, where about, I don't know, eight or nine million children nationally were insured for the first time. And uh, then I worked uh, when President Obama became the uh, president. Uh, we had the opportunity to pass comprehensive health care reform, the Affordable Care Act, which, you know, when it's fully implemented this year, but, I mean, this is a bill that I helped write, when it's mm -hmm. fully implemented this year, will actually uh, cover almost all Americans with health insurance, give them a good benefit package at an affordable price because the government helps subsidize the premium. So I talk about the things that I've accomplished. I think that government works. You can actually make government work for the benefit of working families and, and for the little guy. And that's, uh, you know, so I think that I'll carry that record of accomplishments, if you will, into the Senate. Uh, we have a lot of problems that need to be solved uh, and I can do a better job even in the Senate because it's a uh, as representing the whole state in in getting things done T talking about health care uh, the House majority seems to be hell-bent on repealing Obamacare and standing in the way of any progress how do you operate in a situation like that well I mean you know the the Republicans uh, have been opposed to uh, uh, Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act from day one. We couldn't get any Republican support. I mean, we tried to reach across the aisles, which I do whenever we're trying to pass legislation, see if we can make it bipartisan. But they just were totally opposed. And uh, so I think now the answer is, you know, it's going to be fully implemented by the end of this year uh, for the most part. And uh, I think that as it begins to be implemented and it works and people realize they're going to have good health insurance at an affordable price, then maybe some of the uh, Republican opposition would lessen. Um, but right now, you know, the Tea Party in particular is very much opposed to the bill, as they have been from the beginning. During last night's debate, one of the things you said was that you could get things done in the Senate. What will be your priorities once you get there? Oh, I think the biggest priority right now has to be to grow the economy. Uh, we have to get rid of the sequester, which is this across-the-board cut that the Republicans continue to support. Uh, it's, uh, it makes no sense to cut every, you know, federal program. We should be cutting defense, for example, but not cutting food stamps or Meals on Wheels or programs that, that are, you know, part of the social safety net that help people when they're in need. And uh, we should also be making investments, taking federal dollars to make investments in infrastructure and in education, uh, in research, uh, you know, money that would come back to the states that would grow jobs and jobs with, with uh, good benefits. And in order to do that, it's not only a question of, of coming up with uh, a, a better uh, policy in terms of what we spend, but also trying to bring in more income. I think the wealthy are not paying their fair share. All the tax burden, or most of the tax burden, is now on working families. And there, we also have to plug up corporate loopholes so that corporations essentially contribute more. 
you know, the president uh, has this proposal whereby you might reduce corporate taxes in order to encourage manufacturing and bring manufacturing back from overseas, but at the same time plug up corporate loopholes so the effective tax of corporations is higher because right now, you know, effectively they're, they're not paying much because of all the loopholes. With the Republican Party dominated by climate change deniers, how do we eliminate our dependency on fossil fuels? Well, I think that's another major issue that has to be addressed and that I would work on in the Senate. You know, I pride myself on working on environmental issues, and global climate change has to be addressed. And that means, uh, you know, less dependence on, dependence on fossil fuels, more um, uh, renewable resources like solar power, wind power. And um, I do think there are there's more moderate Republicans in the House, for example, you, that you can get to support uh, some type of global climate initiative, you know, reducing carbon emissions. So what we have to do is, you know, try to reach across the aisle and get some of the more moderates to reduce carbon emissions, to try to sign, get the, uh, the Kyoto Treaty signed, which would get other countries to reduce greenhouse gases as well. Uh, and that's another thing you would do in the Senate. In other words, the Senate, because it has uh, jurisdiction over treaties, uh, that would be something that I would try to do, it would get us to sign the, the Kyoto Agreement. Talking about energy, uh, recent news reports real, uh, reveal that some parts of New Jersey may have shale gas that can be extracted by hydraulic fracturing. What's your position on fracking? I'm opposed to fracking because I think it has a very negative impact on, on the water quality and many, uh, many parts of New Jersey and other states are using uh, drinking water that could be impacted by fracking. So it's, it's something that I would oppose and fight against. Moving on to education, do you think the initiatives to promote vouchers and privatization of education are a good idea? No, absolutely not. And that's one area where I strongly disagree uh, with Mayor Booker, because he has advocated vouchers, which I think take away funding for public schools. Uh, we also have, although charter schools, uh, you know, some charter schools are good, you also have to be concerned about to what extent they're taking away funding from, from public schools. and. Um, you know, there's, there's a major effort now to privatize public schools, you know, getting money from outside corporate interests who then have control over what goes on in the schools, which I think we have to be very wary of. Another thing that's in the news lately is government surveillance. Uh, is the NSA and, and our other agencies overreaching in their surveillance? There's no question that they are. I, I, uh, did not vote for the FISA amendments. I didn't vote for the reauthorization of the Patriots Act because I'm very concerned that we're moving much too far away f uh, from protecting civil liberties. What what uh, a perfect example was, is where uh, you know the NSA basically goes in and says, you know, I want all kinds. They'll ask Verizon or some other you know agency for every records that are not all kinds of records that are not necessarily directly linked. To the investigation at hand, and that that shouldn't be. I mean, in other words, if you know, if they want to go to the uh, FISA court and say, okay, we have a particular investigation, you know, we believe that Al Qaeda in Pakistan is threatening, uh, you know, United States, then you can ask, you know, you can ask that uh, certain surveillance be done directly linked to that investigation. But that's not what's going on. They're just asking for stuff. They're asking for material across the board. And so we've got to rein in this process uh, because it's much too broad. Would you promote transparency in the FISA courts where Absolutely. it doesn't? Absolutely. The, uh, the decisions of the courts should be, should be open. Um, also, the way they appoint the judges. Uh, they're not appointed by the president. They're appointed by the chief justice without the advice and consent of the Senate, uh, which is a huge mistake. But I really think that you should simply repeal the FISA authorization and the Patriots Act and start from scratch because right now these statutes are, are being used uh, in ways that are very invasive of civil liberties. There was a lot of discussion in last night's debate about Syria. Um, the, the entire Middle East has been a, an issue for eons. Uh, is the administration doing enough to promote peace in the Middle East? I think the administration is being ca cautious and I think that that's actually a good thing. Um, you know, the last thing we need are ground troops. We don't want ground troops in Syria. 
And you know, I, I, I believe that essentially you should promote democracy in the Middle East. You should uh, promote the rule of law. You should promote market economies. And so by those principles, certainly Assad has to go because he's a dictator. But we have to be careful that the rebels, some of whom are not pro-democracy, uh, some of whom are actually terrorist organizations, that in, in, in providing them with arms, which the president says he wants to do, that we, you know, are careful who we provide arms to. But the main thing is to try, uh, in the aftermath, now that we know that there's been chemical and biological weapons used, we have to protect civilians. And, and so the U.S. has to get involved, but be very cautious, not, um, uh, not get involved with ground troops, try to act through you know, regional or international organizations like the Arab League or the UN and, and not act unilaterally. Final question, uh, what should be our approach toward immigration and what would you do if elected to the Senate? Well, I'm very much in favor of the comprehensive immigration reform that the Senate has already passed. I like to see the House pass the Senate bill. It's not everything that I would want because it takes too long, 13 years, for a pathway to citizenship. But it does provide a pathway to citizenship, which is the most important aspect of this. If people pay their taxes, they register, they, um, they learn English, or they don't get in trouble with the law, they can eventually become citizens. And so I think we should simply pass in the House the Senate bill. And I would work hard in the Senate uh, to try to uh, you know, get support in the House so we can get it passed and send it to the President. Congressman Pallone, thank you very much. Thanks so much.